So majority of us have been there, you know, broken hearted, ending up with someone who doesn't want you the same way you want them. And if you're not careful, you could end up losing yourself completely and trying to keep that relationship going. And sometimes it can get so bad that whoever you're in a relationship with begins to treat you poorly. All sorts of abuses start to spring up from physical abuse to financial and economic abuse to um, emotional abuse are all on the cards. And sometimes up until that very moment you decide to just leave that toxic relationship, there's not much anyone can say to get you out of that situation because you always seem to be hopeful and you think that things are just gonna work out if you stick it out and if you stay for as long as you can, hold on for as long as you can. But that doesn't always happen. And then you hit a point where you just need to move on from someone that you love, someone that you really, really, really care about when the love becomes Comes unrequited. This video is going to be showing you exactly how you can move on from someone you love. And so if you find yourself in this situation, I'm hoping that this video will bring you some clarity on exactly how to proceed. You're welcome. Welcome back. My name is Jessica and this is my YouTube channel. Today's video is sponsored by Passion Air. It's a Ghanaian airline that operates in Ghana and it takes you from one Ghanaian city to the other quickly and affordably, whether it's for business or pleasure. Make sure that whenever you go visit the motherland, you check out Passion Air. They'll be more than happy to give you a good tour of the country in the shortest possible time. Let's go right ahead to have a little heart to heart here today. Unrequited love is one of the most painful things in the world. When you give someone your all and suddenly they say to you, listen, I cannot do this. I don't want to do this. I do not feel the same way about you anymore. Your heart's breaking. You don't know where to start and all you're left with is pieces. Let me share a couple of steps that you can go through to jumpstart your process towards healing and to really guide and direct you on how you can reinvent and remold yourself to become a better person that you'll be proud of one day. Someone who will be capable of loving again and drinking as deeply as you did before without being affected by the heartbreak that you just experienced. Let's jump right in. Number one, critically think about how the relationship you're in is impacting you. Take a good look at this relationship that you're leaving behind. Think about how it has impacted you emotionally, financially, spiritually, personally as a human, how it's affected your relationships, perhaps even isolated you from the people that really love you, friends and family. And ask yourself if it was really worth that sacrifice. When you really begin to see how ugly that relationship was for you and how toxic it was for your mental health, you would realize that it is indeed a good step that you're stepping away from such toxicity and finding peace in this new space and new environment. I know the feeling. Most people feel like they cannot live without this person that they love, but that is a lie. You're totally capable of doing that. It will hurt for a week, for a month, for years. But one day you're going to be able to look back at this person, look back at the relationship you shared and realize that they actually did you a favor by leaving. Number two, once you realize just how toxic that relationship was for you, the next thing you need to do is to cut all communication. It is important to do so because you need to give your heart, your mind and your soul time to breathe, time to get away from it all, time to heal. If you're constantly in this person's space, constantly trying to reach out to them and they're ignoring you, constantly looking at their posts on social media and how happy they are, they've moved on with other people, constantly trying to remind yourself of the pain that you felt when they left you, you're going to have major issues in healing. To be able to heal properly, to be able to come back from heartbreak and betrayal, you're going to have to cut communication. Now, if you have children, it makes it more complicated, but you're going to have to find a fine way to still stay in touch with the kids, especially if, um, if your partner 
kept the children, and if they will still allow you to, and maintain a civil platonic relationship with this partner you just left. Kids make it complicated, but if you have no children, then it's easier for you to just cut communication and walk away. If you have to delete their number, do so. If you have to block them on WhatsApp and on social media, do so. Anything you need to do to cut ties, cut communication, so you can give your heart and mind time to rest, you should do it. Number three, you've thought about the relationship that you just left. You've cut all communication. Now it's time to focus on you. You are beautiful or handsome and wonderfully made. Never feel that you cannot make it without another human being because you can. You just have to decide where you want to go next, how you're going to get there, what you need to do to get there. These are the three things you need to do to move on. Focus on yourself. Re-establish all the old relationships that used to make you happy with friends, with family, with all the people that you are not allowed to see or talk to. Start to think about how you can improve who you are, how you can become a better version of yourself, how you can start to make your mental mountains move. Because a lot of the limitations that we feel is mental. Now I'll tell you about some folks that take care of elephants. They are able to tie these huge gargantuan elephants with a tiny single rope. And these elephants believe that they're in captivity and never tend to break that rope and walk away into freedom. You know why? Because when the elephants were tiny, those ropes are what held them back. And as they grow and their caregivers tie their legs with those same ropes, and even though they're like 150 times bigger than they used to be, in their minds, they're still enslaved. They still cannot break free, and so they never try. That is how it is for most people. We're limited by our own fears. We always feel we're incapable. But once you begin to realize that it's totally possible to break free from the chains of all the things that hold you back, you cannot imagine what you'll start to achieve. Focus on you. Think about the next steps. Where do you go from here? Where do you want to be in the next year, in two years, in three years? How are you going to get there? What do you need to do? What new skills, what new things do you need to learn to get to that position? That's the kind of mindset I want you to have. Number four, distract yourself. Now, whilst you focus on yourself, it can also be hard to just remain in your quiet space. And sometimes when you're alone with your thoughts, they wander. They'll wander back to this person that just left you, to this person that you loved and did not love you back or no longer wants to be in a relationship with you. So another way to do it is to find something that distracts you. It could be anything from old hobbies to picking up new hobbies. You know, you can find a book to read, you can make new friends, you can engage in so many extracurricular activities. The distraction will help you keep your mind off all those negative thoughts that keep coming back to you to let you feel like you are absolutely incapable without this person. Find a good distraction, whatever your distraction may be, and engross yourself in that activity. Number five, there are too many people who try to force relationships or friendships with people who broke their heart. Personally, if you broke my heart, I cannot be a friend, at least not immediately. You need to be able to disconnect. Do not force a friendship because sometimes when these people leave you, they will offer you friendship in return. Here's a question I ask. If I'm not good enough to be the love of your life, why do you need me to be a friend? I'll take my friendship away. I will completely disconnect from you. And I personally will never give you my friendship as a consolation prize. I will never do that, at least not immediately. Over time and as you heal and over the years, once you get over this person, you can come back to the table and grow a friendship that is civil, but do not push for friendship do not settle if they offer you friendship because it's only going to let your pain last longer. You're going to watch them love other people when all along you'll be wishing that you were them. Not good for your heart, not good for your mind. Number six, repurpose and rebuild. Now you're going to be left with a lot of love and I could tell you this, that there are lots of people in the world today who need your love. Need is what I said, not just want. 
need. And so do not go where you are tolerated. Go where you're celebrated. You have a lot of love to give and there are lots of avenues to show that love. Repurpose the pain you feel in your heart and let it become joy. Repurpose the pain you feel in your heart and let it turn into contentment. Refocus on the things in life that truly matter. Give yourself time to heal and then rebuild your life one brick after the other. It's completely possible. It's okay to start again. There are people who were in their 40s that started again, 50s that started again, 60s that started again. I know 70 year olds who have turned their lives around. Rebuild your broken friendships. Rebuild your confidence. Rebuild your inner self. Become a better version of you because it's completely possible. Read books that you never thought you would. Gain inspiration from other people who are doing better than you. Join communities of people who've been down your road. Share your story for other people to hear and learn from. You can completely turn this experience around to your benefit. Do not take that for granted. There is a reason you went through what you went through. You may not see it now, but trust me, X number of years down the line, you'll be looking back at yourself and saying, wow, I needed to go through this to enable myself grow. Because if that didn't happen, I would be stuck settling in a relationship which was one-sided. And finally, if all these do not work, please seek professional counsel. See a therapist. There are lots of people out there who can offer you professional advice. A couple of sessions a week should get you on the road to really rebuilding your life and finding love again. I wish you well. I wish you the best of luck. Thanks for watching this video. My name is Jessica. Cheers.